I am glad to welcome Professor John Ebnezer for this uh, first uh, postgraduate education webinar series. And I'm very thankful to Sir for uh, taking this uh, talk. And, and we, we are all eager to hear you, Sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the postgraduate education. Is one pearls and pitfalls in each exams has been chosen as our talk. Now, before I begin the my dear students, and I would like to introduce you to you know myself to you all. You know me, but um, you know, let me give you a brief introduction so that you will know all about me. I am a teacher, author among MBAs and PhD students, author of both children's books in all degrees, books for all genders, and multiple international editions. Two Guinness World Records, book writing, researcher, PhD, and then 16 international publications. My research figures in the 2013 non orthopedic international treatment guidelines by the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery. I have over 250 presentations all over the world um, in various conferences, and I have one for community services for my own trust. And and clubs. So far, I have six grades for records, two for academics, three for social studies, and one for awareness. And some various professional bodies, former vice president of the Indian Association, president of the Eurospinal Surgeons Association of India, former the Geriatric Orthopedic Society of India, new method of treatment in uh, orthopedics, setting the trend, holistic orthopedics, a uh, pioneer, uh, uh, new treatment method, and also started a new service. So we are looking of uh, professional bodies, former vice president of the IOA and president of the New Spinal Studies Association of India, founder of the Geriatric Orthopedic Society of India, um, setting a new trend, new method of treatment in orthopedics, first of all, So, pioneer that new treatment and also started a new subspecialty, Geriatric Orthopedics. Two lifetime achievement awards, 2014 and 16. First Indian Orthopedic Surgeon to be the guest speaker. Over 240 international, national, and state awards so far. But machine, first of all, surgery from Karnataka, only the 15th of India since 1954. Two national awards, such as BCOI National Award and Silver Jubilee Research Award of NCI. And then the international motivation speaker, target audience, being my students, being the bank. So, this is a brief introduction about me. Now, I thank Dr. Ashok Shah for involving me in this EGT Championship. My all time favorite passion for teaching. We have lined up nine episodes for you all, and today is the first episode the pearls and pitfalls in PT exams. I may not have this is the most appropriate topic to start off the PT episodes um, because you know, when we face the exams, uh, what are the pearls and what are the pitfalls we should follow is you know, what is the idea behind it. Experience are undoubtedly the biggest event in any PG student plan. Everyone wants to successfully scale this difficult summit. Many falter and few succeed. Our goal is to help the not so gifted ones to successfully scale this summit. Success in examination is not just a flash in the pan, it is the result of a sustained, concentrated, and dedicated approach. PG exams is first out of any exams you are going to face in your life. So, here we go. Everyone likes to scale the summits of life. Everybody wants to do the data. But only a few become nine movies and kapas. But majority of nine wish in the law. Every student wants to do well in the examination. But only a few do well and others don't. Why is the question? What is that makes the difference is it the luck, good fortune, or the influence? Why so many of our graduates fail in the university in the examination? Is it part of the system or students' fault? What do why do students dread the advent of an examination? Is it lack of confidence, lack of preparation, lack of knowledge, or lack of training? Can examinations be approached in a carefree manner? 
can examinations be fun? Can examinations be seen as means to an end and not an end itself? The answer is a big yes. Yes, indeed, exams can be fun if you know how to approach it. Here are some very successful people. What sets them apart? Why others cannot match their success stories? In what way they are different? Are they gods? They are very much human like us. And why are they different? Why do they have very few champions? Do they do different things? What are the success model of champions? Subtraction for their formation, preparation, practice, perseverance, and then performance. This is from the Arindan of this book, Discover the Diamond in You. This is the success model of champions. Let us take an example of each such champion. Say this is achieved, for example. Was his success due to luck? Was he fortunate? Was he connected to the right people? Is he not human like us? How had he lasted so long? How had he defied age? Their success, is it a group or is it due to intense preparation, strict discipline, sustained practice, strict fitness levels, learning new skills, working on the next, discussing more with their peers, humility at all times. Everyone has heard it many times. Champions do not do different things, but do things different. If it is saying that, if you can practice and implement all the strategies and practices of a champion, you are also going to produce the same results. So when it comes to the world of practical examination, mega event, here examination, examiners and evaluators are being visible people. In practical exams, you come face to face with seasoned examiners of various backgrounds. Here you are visible to the examiner and you will have to face them directly. It will be a bumpy ride for you. They have to face a barrage of questions, criticism, and seldom breaks. You could be intimidated, abused, bad, grim, and whatnot before you come out of the event. The outcome, pass or fail, largely hinges on how you perform on the given day. I think you might be knowing about P.T. Usha, who lost by one. How to send off a second at Olympics? And you also might be knowing the story of Javed Miata, who hit a last for six, bringing victory to his team. So the same thing with us. What we do on the given day could either be success or failure to us. So will your performance be a smooth day off, landing on whether it's going to crash? If you do not want to crash in the practical examination, remember the four P's. What are they? Planning, ridiculous, it has to be. Preparation has to be intense, and you need to diligently practice what we prepare. And then uh, finally, you will have to perform with the exams. That is what determines your success. So let us look into the first step planning. Remember this golden bonus. Exams are a part of life and not life itself. What you learn should be a lifetime of effort. So proper planning is poor performance. Without proper planning, if you set it to a dimension more, you will end up as a failure. The second step is preparation. How to prepare for the uncertain and challenging practical exams? What are the qualities required for the student to secure this moment? Remember MS Dhoni's success formula. You see, it's part of the process. Result will follow automatically. We always try to focus on the result, forget the process, and that is why most of them come across. Here is a list of some important preparatory methods. Intense preparation. Prepare, prepare from day one of your student life. Balance your practical work with studies judiciously. Last minute ever speed. Learn all the things the right way. When does the preparation for the practical exam start? Paradoxically, it is not close to the exam, but close. Starts from your OBs, walks, lecture classes, the present cases, discussions, the different journal clubs, seminars, CMEs, workshops, extended discussion, and others. How to prepare for the exams? 
first thing first for your syllabus. How to learn? Start from the basics. Use your God, your faculties. Be open minded. Get the basics right always. Learn the art of critical thinking fully. Do not be investigation centric. A class of knowledge. Be disciplined in your life as a student. Be regular. Be a perfect man. And make your fitness physical and mental. Now, what do I want in this project? First thing first, know your syllabus. How many of you know the syllabus? Spend a lot of time understanding the requirements of your training. Make efforts to know the syllabus. Familiarize yourself with the examination patterns. Universities are different, they face exams are different, so you should know about the syllabus. Then, how to learn? Start from the basics. Example of Raj Kapu. Start with his career as a clapper ball. Example of the devotion. Start his career sweeping the floors of the studio. By their students, they are always in a hurry. They don't want to start from the basic, from the scratch. They want to stay in their operate. They want to stay in their things. So it's not going to happen that way. They have to start from the scratch and from the basic. That is how you know you should begin your course. Yes, sir. Go on. Start moving. Uh, uh, yeah. How to learn? Learning just does not happen in the classrooms. God has given you two eyes, see and observe more, two ears, listen more, only one mouth, so speak less, and be, you know, observe when you are in the classroom, when you are in the walks, when you are attending to the clubs, when you are in the discussions, when you are in the library, when on the internet, when in the canteens. Learn from everyone, everywhere, and every situation. Now the next question is from who to learn? Be an open mind, open parachute, so high in the skies. Closed mind is like a closed parachute and is a sure as like a disaster. From everybody we can learn, from what by it will get to really teach the best, best of us the techniques. From the IRs, from the sisters, who tell you about preparation and CK, from the UTs, from the fellow PGs, from the senior PGs, from your teachers, from, say, from doing seminars, from the partners, from the students. And you get the basic side, right. you need to be extremely thorough with the basis of technology of clinical examination and investigations. Know the value of clinical examination, it's a forgotten art. Spend a lot of time in the initial stages learning about the correct methods of clinical examination. This is very important. Become a clinician first before attending surgeries. Be very meticulous in your examination methods. Discuss with your colleagues. Note, Hippocrates was a master clinician. Do not be investigation centric, lab centric, x ray centric, CT scan centric, MR centric, and ego centric. No, it should be clinical centric. They need to be the summaries and not masters. Investigation, not taking. You should be taking the investigations. Take classes by UGs, by teaching UGs to learn what. Take classes, help them to understand the clinical examination methods. Try to answer all the doubts and queries. Get back and read if you are in doubt. This is what I did, and believe me, it gave me a handsome evidence in life to get the exams. I mean, discipline. Practice discipline diligently. Not only in your personal life, but in your you know, professional life, as two minutes ago, it is washed into programs, OT, and in emergency. It helps and pays to hands something to be disciplined. Be regular, no substitute for hard work. Regular everyday reading, reading before and after seeing a case, reading about the approaches before and after surgery, understanding and reading about the before and after treatment, rehabilitation, procedures and protocols, regularly during your codes and postings to so read and supplements. Do not read for the examination sake, so read to acquire knowledge since you are going to practice it in the future. Examination should just be a part of exercise and not your goal. And be a perfect team man, be good and interact well with your colleagues, teachers, juniors, duties, paramedical staff, patients. Do not be egoistic, selfish, proud, and push out everybody from your life. Be ready to take responsibility for your teaching programs, scams, posters, etc. And then, finally, physical fitness. This is the last difference of our students. Seldom I have seen these students doing physical exercise. What is the use if you prepare well and fall sick right at the time of exams? Recently, you might have seen Shadul Thakur, 
He broke down in his first test match after just 14 balls. What is the point? You know, if you break down at the, at the, you know, at the most important part of your life, then your opportunity is gone. Hence, you lots of importance to help. Keep your self being by regular exercise and don't be in the of smoking, alcohol, drugs, etc. Then, mental toughness, the yoga way, mental toughness. In situations in the construction exams and it's build your mental strength by meditation, fire, and yoga. Then the last step that was about the preparation starting up to practice. Now, whatever you are preparing, you should know how to practice it. Attend the clinical postings regularly. See all the examination cases in the walls. Read standard books in all the videos. Become familiar with the clinical examination. Present as many cases as possible within the clinical postings. This will make you prevent and boost your confidence. Inculcate the habit of discussions. Understand principles behind the treatment. Attend as many PG orientation programs as possible. Interact with those who have already taken the exams. Try out mock exams. Have a group of like minded friends. Once in a while, organize an exam like situation. Become an examiner yourself and experience the feeling. This will bring your confidence. It helps you to avoid the examination jitters. Make a habit of writing the case papers. Write the case papers. Write the you know, cases what you're going to present in your seminars or in your case discussions. Learn to keep your time limit. Writing makes you perfect. Do not forget to do these. Negating these may prove very costly in exams. Visit the Department of Orthopedics and Prosthetics and familiarize yourself. Visit the Pathology Department to see the specific slides. Be perfect with common surgical techniques. Know the basics of implants and implants. See as many x rays as possible during your course. Fourth and final step is your performance. Success as a road is no flash in the pan. Now you have prepared well, you have planned well. Now learn the art of performing well in the exam, preparing yourself for better exam performance. How do you do that? Well, the night before the exams, don't be under tension, eat well, avoid last minute reading or discussion. When in the hostel, do not pay importance to the negative experiences of other students who have taken the exams before you. They may have got many stories to tell you. Don't get bogged down by their misfortunes or misadventures. Uh, what has happened to them and what happened to your job? Sleep well. Get up early in the morning, take a refreshing bath, say a short prayer, reach the hall 20 minutes before. And keep these things handy. Tools required for clinical examination. In a hurry, don't forget these things while you are going to the hall. It may create stress for you. Measuring tapes, skip markers, a hammer, for your meter, a pin, cartons, and score. These are the ones you require in the exam. So keep it handy. And how are you going to execute your plans for the big day during the exam in the examination hall? Your asset is going to start now. How to overcome the challenges? Know the do's and don'ts in the examination hall. Deep breathing, start the deep breathing, take five deep breaths. This releases a lot to be refreshed. That was as the use of this point of spread. Believe all will be well. Believe all is going to be well. Believe you will do well. Believe things will work in your favor. Believe your hard work in pain. Believe in the best, but be prepared for the worst. Be mentally prepared for the worst. Be positive. Hey, things can be smooth, but be mentally prepared. Things can go wrong too. Then, when cases are all to you, patient etiquette needs to be followed. Ascertain whether your case is in your reach, your, your case correctly. Greet your patients. Know the time limit. Try to converse with the local language if possible. If not, seek for translators. Be courteous. Be gentle. Be respectful towards female patients. Do not be rude, arrogant, and insensitive. Go around your examination very systematically. Write the level and reward points in the sheets. When you are face to face with the examiner, read your exam. Have a smile on your face. Now your heart may be pumping fast. Look into his eyes straight. Wait for his instructions to begin. Take a deep breath. Begin slowly and confidently. Be alert to the questions posed. Think before you answer. 
if you are in doubt, I politely request you to repeat the question. Start presenting methodically and not haphazardly. If things go wrong, try patience. You all know gravity is what we call a wall for its phenomenal patience. He wears down the borders, slowly wins the months. Lambert of Sheva, who that put perish giving up the movement. In the practical exams, you need to be private time. Wear out your examiners. Have contingent facts ready in the event of a sudden turn of event. Turn of Rahul Javed. My prospect of saying Krishna was golden words. When you are stuck with a bad situation in the exam, let the world wait pass on. He says when things go wrong, as sometimes I have in the exams, that mentally allow the will wait to pass on. You cannot fight this tonight. So many survive with just hanging out on this things that pass. Now, I'll give an example. How things can go wrong in exams. My own example, in first few years, with Dr. Kata. She tried to blame me in histology. The reason was, she said, I was sitting cross like now, which I don't remember. She saw me, some corner of the home, and I was sitting with the legs cross. And she presumed that I'm a very arrogant student, and she decided to you know, do something for me, and she failed me. So, harassed me in the dissection, asked me to leave the hall, asked me to stop dissecting. My case was for Peter Posa, and I was dissecting it. She asked to stop. Then, when I answered everything about Peter Posa, she asked, started asking me about literacy. I am an anatomy student, I'm not a medical student, but she started asking me on leprosy because she asked me she was there to come and learn the lab to go every twice off the length of the blood then she thought would not be then she said come on tell me about leprosy what is leprosy and all and all she started asking fortunately I knew about leprosy as I visited a leprosy hospital in Ubi where I did my MBS and had a written an essay which impressed me by impressed me that work lepers work I did an essay which was sent to Switzerland and it was appreciated by the director of the hospital. That experience came handy to me in the first thing in this exam and I could answer all questions on leprosy, the types of leprosy, the organizing which causes leprosy, the symptoms of leprosy, the treatment, the nerves which are involved, retinal nerve, lung nerve, and the visual nerve, and then the lateral, all the nerves I told, and then I told on the online exam. Gave it six hours, nursing, but life gave me the rescue, saved me from the harassment, and I lost my third rank to the industry by a mere eight months. So, this is what can happen. Things can go wrong sometimes without your knowledge, and then you should know. Keep your cool, come out of it. Then, use this ABC loss. What is the ABC loss? We are getting you an alert. Be bold and not dash, and use common sense. And avoid this ABC. Don't argue. Don't beg and don't cry. Arguing is the biggest gender what you can do in the exam hall. It's a sure shot for failure. No examiner likes a student who argues. He is the boss and know that boss is always right. Do not argue even though you feel that the exam is wrong. Mildly but firmly express your opinion. Arguing will certainly do you. And do not try and try to gain examiner sympathy. This is a tactic mostly used by girls. They work on them, they go against you. Reassure yourself that you can do it. Snatch the results with both your hands rather than spread your hands. Feeling what is the purpose? And do not depend on do things correctly and minimize the errors. Always put up a brain front, look straight into the exam side. Remember, fortune always favors the brain. And learn to manage your tension. Keep cool. Use plenty of common sense and be opportunistic. Remember, hard work will pay. Certain amount of tension is unavoidable, but not be worth the fight. Do not outsmart your examiners. Remember, the examiners make students once, and they, they know all the trials, tribulations, and mischiefs. So do not bluff and try to outsmart them. In cases of ambiguity, do not give a very accurate diagnosis, even though you are very sure. This will create suspicion in their mind. Hence, always give a differential diagnosis. Usually. In short cases, in scholars, diagnosis is not a problem. It's a clear cut case of your view, but discussion is going to be a problem. So focus more on your discussion. So do not try these shortcut methods. Remember, shortcut is often a long cut. 
from the scan respect for clinical examination and that's one key to look into the case very first. Key to look into the x-rays, look out for prongs, seeking the help of the internals, begging the examiners, asking diagnosis from internal experts, trying and acting in front of the examiners, concentrating on, on surgical techniques, involving in manipulations, asking the patients, bribing the patient, and ensure a simple thing. What students normally do? They do not see the patient properly. Do not talk to the patient properly. Do not elicit proper history. They are key to arrive at the diagnosis very quickly. Eager to look for clues. Ask for help from anyone in the examination hall. Panic, hurry, and then look for problems. So make your own diagnosis first. Do not need to box by examination experts. Be cautious with the patients. Better with repeated examination by many students and you, they may be seen. So do not look into the case paper as things may be erroneous in it. Follow a methodical and analytical approach. Do not stop after making a diagnosis. Look beyond for complications and other changes. Always make a common diagnosis and not a diagnosis. Be on your guard if you are the first or the last student. A fresh examiner and a tired examiner, both are dangerous. If things are going tough, keep your food, have presence of mind and look for clues. Never panic in an extremely difficult situation. By making smart, intelligent moves, always leave the examples into areas of your strength and do not get led into areas of your weakness. And practice gentleness with your patients and staff. Never be harsh with them. Be gentle, smiling, be kind, and that be humble. If you develop the same qualities, that will be quite a handful, not only in the examination, but in your life too. Integrity makes you handsome. Unparalleled integrity is a powerful weapon. When everything fails, your integrity will see you through. Embrace this five steps to seek it. When all is easy, share with fairness, hard work, and kindness. This will make you new, principle in your exams. And like this. Do not resort to dear things, cheating, lying, copying, insincerity, falsehood, bullying, indecency, and kindness. And that's for a winning presentation. Code, relevant point of these and journals. This will create an impression in the exam of mine. Whatever statement you make, define your objectives. Analyze your exam as well. To see what in it is trying to you know, how is the exam done? And what is he trying to you know, get out of you? So you have to you know, study in carefully and structure your presentation well. Follow all the words which I mentioned so far. There are some personal tips and tricks to work on troublesome situations. When you are in a troublesome situation, you have two options. Either you fight or you lie. I can report personal experiences of mine in practical exams, both as a UK, which I would like to share with you. It may give an idea. Experience a fresh examiner, a tired examiner, an unreasonable exam, which I have already shared with you, Dr. Nata, and my DMP examination experience. Yeah. Uh, in the UK uh, exam, I was given a case of unreduced advocacy in this location, which I had not seen during my posting. So I had no idea about unreduced advocacy location. But I have seen a case of a lunatic sofa tumor fracture. So it did appear like a bar lunatic sofa tumor fracture. So I made a diagnosis by default that it is an unreduced advocacy location. It presented the diagnosis in front of my examiner, who was also a patient. Then why tell the diagnosis? I thought it is right and but it was left and then he questioned, he said it is right and it was not left. Then suddenly I was taken aback. I knew about this example because previously he had paid one of the student for a silly reason. Then I thought, now if I say it is left, maybe he may figure me and he may fail me. Then I have to take a chance now. Should I go with my diagnosis as right or change it to left? I paused for a minute. Then I thought, let me go by my instinct. I said, no, sir, it is right and it will go me. You are shocked. Example, I said, no, no, I have selected the case myself today morning. It was left. But look at the confidence of this boy. The way he is telling it is right. I think he did it right. So he said, okay, fine, I accept, go out. And I went home, I came out of the exam hall, I breathed a sigh of relief, kept giving me very good marks, some 45 out of 60, and then I done well. Then he came to know that I had blood. Only when the next student, my friend of the Ganesh Rao, who is a radiologist right now in Bangalore, he was the next student again, and he knew him, he came to know that I had, you know, you know told uh, something which was right in his mind, but I, I made him believe I was right. So, uh, this is an experience which I would like to share. Then, when you have a last candidate in the exams, when the exams, exams are tired, 
So that can also bring you a lot of problems. So here is an example of my own. In my KBS interview, I was the last candidate of the day. When I went in, they were all very tired and they just wanted to drive me out of the hall. So they posed a very silly question to me. They asked, if the health of a person is gone, what, what happens to the faculty? Was the question that was paid. Not posed to me. Earlier, they asked all medical questions. But for me, there are some general questions that were just they wanted to find pass and send me out. Now I thought they were trying to eliminate me. I took a deep breath and began. I said, sir, I'll answer your question with an exam. Okay? They said, they agreed. And I, just, I told the story. I went, color blind each in driver. They said, this driver is color blind. He is not able to record the green, the red, and the orange, and he creates an ask. So they asked, so what? What we did? How did you answer our question? I said, now you see, sir, there's a train accident. How many lives are lost? See the amount of the material damage that has happened, and uh, you know all that has to be now put back, and so much of compensation has to be paid, insurance has to be paid, so much of loss for the country. So all this happened. The health of that person was not good. So if one person's health can cause so much of damage, then you said you are talking of the country. What, what happens? You can imagine the loss would be. You know, unimaginable, and you know, it would be, you know, it, it, it would be catastrophic. And we are all stunned by my way of interpretation. And I, 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 I had the first try in the KBC interview with this kind of a you know, number and an interview. Then, how you should lead your examiner into your areas of strength? You carry the, the elephant to the kettle. So you drop the elephant the way you want to drop. So you don't get into their strength. If you can get into the strength, there are chances that you will back. So how, for example, you did this. It was second KBC When I went to the exam, asked me, how does a patient with tuberculosis present? He was, you know, he meant he was further tuberculosis. He wanted me to tell how many. But I was not very, very strong in further tuberculosis. Because I was already in a first year diploma student in all things. So what I did was, I said, it depends on what tuberculosis the patients have. And he said, what do you mean? Sir, it would be skeletal tuberculosis. I stressed on skeletal tuberculosis. So it depends. Then he was irritated. He said, this boy is trying to ask for me. So let me ask him about skeletal disease. He thought I'm just an immediate student. So he was irritated. He thought I will not go for skeletal disease. He asked, tell me about skeletal tuberculosis. And I said, again, it depends on whether it's spine or head or other things. Then he was now sitting in that. He told me everything on spine tuberculosis. That was what I wanted. I was poor in one tuberculosis. But he was on spine tuberculosis. I was first year diploma student. I had worked on a paper with Dr. B.B. Pupi. So I knew about spine tuberculosis, answered, answered all the questions on spine tuberculosis, and was placed home. So this is the exam. That's what I can do. Then there are some discipline patients in the exam. They can be your water group, beware of them. So you have a friend, friend of Nagesh, a rice soup, who paid it but passed out later because of mercy of the exam. He was given a short case of this drop. And then a uh, patient said it is due to an injection for fever by a doctor. And that's how he presented it. Is the exam that disagreed with them and asked the patient the, the mechanism of the mechanism of this list drop. The patient changed worship, worship. He told, Sir, I was traveling in a bus. 43 degrees, the first turn of light breaks suddenly, and I jerk forward, and then I got a strong. The examiner promptly paid my friend Nanish. But later in the evening, all the experts assembled, they said he's an accident, they know his examiner's police and patients, and he can receive the thing, sir, please don't pay him, and then he's passing, so uh, we are going to just straight through the exam. What is the moral of the suit? Never believe the patient completely. They can misguide you. Keep all your options always open. Be polite and courteous. Repeated examiners could have examination could have left them cold and numb, and they would like to take it out on you. And maybe your bad luck on that day may be you. So beware. So my experience during the exams, my brush with the legend of the movie, she might close the set 15 minutes for examination, writing, presentation, every now is 45 minutes. And we took exams for just 15 minutes, and I took years successfully. But what happened to my friend next to me left in down pocket? It was a case with tuberculosis, spinal paraphrasis, which she missed and paid. 
moral of the story here is there is no substitute for the body clinical examination. That's a very sound here, the examination. That's when you get examined up to three. Pay attention to all the minor details to avoid errors in exams. Be confident, never overconfident about the minor in the exams. And believe your eyes and believe your instincts. In the short case, the real exam, I was given a case of all related police structure, but I saw a scar. And I said, why this scar is there on this market police manager? I inquired the patient, why this scar? And he said, some virus scar, we call the virus scar. Then it alerted me. Then I thought maybe it's a case of giant cell tumor with malignant and malignant. Then I told that. And then the examiner showed me the x ray, and indeed it was a case of TCG. Because I took a cue from the scar, I put I both it right. Moral of the story here is if the straightforward case is given, you will not be satisfied with the obvious diagnosis. Look beyond and think. You may find something extra. Be on guard always. Make proper history and do proper examination. And most importantly, Use your God for faculties, faculties to better effect. And then I was taken for a war round. They were testing the overall knowledge, common sense, and working knowledge in the war. They showed me external fixatures, asked about the external fixatures, why it was used from those times, external factors, etc. were related to me. And then they asked me a full question on an empty bed. They showed me the empty bed. They asked me to comment on the bed. They said, What can I comment on the bed? No, they asked me, Is this right for all three patients? What is the right kind of bed for all three patients? What is the defect you have seen in this bed? So on and so forth. That was a big defense question. So do not neglect the war work as a student. It pays me sincerely, the student pays. Doing war work is never a waste. The experiences could come handy in exams, particularly the national exams. And I was asked about pioneers. I was asked about Yisra. I was asked about Vini Joshi, Dr. P.K. Seki. So, moralists, do not forget the sweat and toil of the countless number of ultimate pioneers. Remember them, build upon their work and build upon their works and make the world a better place to live in. If they ask you about the pioneers, if they ask you about H.O. Thomas, you should be able to answer. You should not draw a blank. You know, you may cut the soil. Because, main reasons why case presentations fail and this is exams. Not enough knowledge, not enough preparation, not seen a similar case before, more confidence, language, restraints. Not enough knowledge. I have told you, if you are not read, if you don't know basics, you will be handicapped. And then, not enough preparation, not no schematic reports, anxiety, nervousness, and speaking disease, and not number, not many number of cases seen, and uh, not many cases presented in the, in the, in the exams, in, the, in, the, in your training program. Most of the PG teaching products have seen PG students shy away from presenting the cases. They don't want to come forward to present the cases. No, you have to present as many as possible. And lack of not regular teaching programs are not contained and many, many teaching programs are also be a lack of preparation, not exposed to different examination. Some examiners have different different viewpoints. You know, if you expose yourself to them, you will not try to know all. And people, language districts, when your centers are at a different place, uh, and a North Indian may get a South Indian uh, you know, examination center, or a South Indian may get a center in North India. I got my center in four other economics because of the gun. So I, I, they, they, they couldn't understand Kara, they couldn't understand English Hindi. So they gave me a translator that should not be a problem. They picked to listen to the end of a And then when you have not seen a similar case before, as that happened to me in my UG exams, and it can become a serious problem for you. But you should keep thinking, you know, keep your thinking hat off, do not panic, try to make a diagnosis by exclusion. Usually, if you are very well, you can overcome even those which you are not seen on here. And uh, you know, I have put my example. And uh, the speaking disease, which I told you, is a big problem. So you need to overcome it. So it may start right before the examination, the fear of presentation, fear of examiners, and others present in the hall. Years of mistakes, do not get obsessed with the greatest fear of all and try to overcome it. And anxiety, how to deal with it? See, understand, anxiety is a natural state that exists anytime we are faced with stress. Examination normally will cause some stress. So don't worry, it is not the trick is to make your excessive energy work for you. When you learn to make stress work for you, it can be the fuel for a male more enthusiastic and dynamic presentation. The tips for reducing anxiety is organize your well, yourself well, visualize well, practice well, breathing techniques, focus, relaxing, releases the tension. 
and keep moving around. I contact with all the examiners and do not be aggressive. Try assertiveness. Should be confident. You can stick to your answer if you are sure of what you say. Don't argue. Unfortunately, but sometimes pull the, the line of the examiner. Anybody can, anybody can go wrong. Keep your calm. Don't try to make examiner realize that he is wrong and you are right. Realize that you are on the other side of the fence now. So buy your time. So you know, don't you know, go into things like that. Big pause that you should avoid. Improper thing to examination methods. Panic reaction. Not understood the subject well. Shortcut methods. Superficial reading habits. Poor applied knowledge. Arrogance and easy. When to take calculated risk. When you have nothing to lose but everything to gain, you should learn how to take the risk. You should not be rash. You should know when you should end up taking a calculated risk. For example, you might have seen these great cricketers like Virat Sachin. Till they reach their century, they are cautious. Once they reach their century, they start you know, becoming more aggressive. Why? Because they have already landed up with their landmark now. Uh, now they can take a risk and score fast. Similarly, you should also know when to take a calculated risk. I'll give you my personal example in second year exams. It was a pathology exam, and my examiner of pathology told me that I was exceedingly well in the exam. But he wanted to give me extra marks and a gold medal. He told me that you will now ask a question <coughs> that is about recent advances. As a UG student, you are not used to these recent advances. And will not penalize me if I answer it wrong. But if I answer it right, then you will give me some bonus marks. I said, I'm ready, sir. Then he asked me, Am I aware, are you aware of a fantasy prepared from the scheme of the wrong world? Well, I did not know it. Now it was my, my, my chance of not taking the risk here. I had nothing to lose because, because they are told me, even if I now say the incorrect answer, it's not going to penalize me. But everything you gain, because if I you know, strike it right now, I may get you know, bonus marks. So, obviously, I thought. The very fact that uh, he has asked me this question implies that there could be such a vaccine available. Otherwise, why do he, he ask me like that? So, keeping this in my mind, I told him, yes sir, I know about this vaccine, I heard of it. was so happy. He said, very good, they are a very good student. And he gave me extra marks upon second day I ranked university and the highest marks in pathology during those times. So, that is when I took a calculated risk. Similarly, when you land up in a situation where you are now, you know, have to take a risk, be careful. Don't take a risk, which is going to jeopardize your career. And don't put yourself into a problem by being rash. Take by, if you are not sure, don't take any risk at all. If you are, you know, inclined to take a risk, only when you are safe, when you have reached the shore, then you take the risk. Otherwise, you will be safe. Examiners also could be wrong. See, they are human too. They are not infallible. They could be wrong. Other examiners will bring out during discussion. At the end of the you know, examination session, there will be a round table discussion happening behind the closed doors. At the time, they will analyze all the performance of the student. At the time, the other examiners will bring you notice of the, this examiner that look here, you have analyzed, you have given wrong marks, or you have unnecessarily. You know, harass that particular student, he's a very good student, he knows everything, so what was bad for you can change bad those. So don't you know, lose your hope when somebody bags you. And they, they will not be able to support in front of you, but behind you, there will be a discussion that will happen and there will be different views presented, there will be no uniformity in thinking and in topics, and then you may escape to your internal expert will come to the rescue at the time. So we can be, be you know, you know, uh, open always. So, let me conclude my talk. Practical exams are a challenge. Remember the six P planning, preparation, practice, perseverance, positivity, and then finally, perform. It is not just performance alone. Overnight, you will not be able to perform like a champion. It is a sustained effort for three years. If you prepare it this way, no examiner or no situation will block your progress because you are seasoned person now. You have seasoned yourself so well that you know, and nobody can stop you. There was a very famous dialogue from a movie called Kurandi, 
and Rajkumar, the, you know, the man who was known for his dialogues. He has got Rewar students under him, so he trains them. He gives them a secret of success. He tells that.
Let us join again two weeks from now on the examination. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That was a very inspiring talk. And I Thank think you. you Thank you, yes, sir. And I think you covered a lot of uh, uh, lot of things that uh, are there in students' mind and their fears and their anxieties. Uh, yeah, that is because Right, right. So. Right. Anyone want to ask me a question? Uh, from SIOR, does anybody wants to ask any question? So a very good and informative uh, uh, lecture by sir. Uh, very out of the box tips he has given us. And I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, make the most of the use of his tips that he has given. Please introduce yourself. I am Dr. Nilay um, uh, and we are from uh, Sanchiti Institute of Orthopedic Rehabilitation. Okay, nice meeting you guys. Thank you sir. Okay. Thank you sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hello sir. Thank you so much for the, for the lecture. I am Dr. Ishani from Sanchiti Institute as well. Uh, sir, okay. I'm, yes sir. Sir, yeah. I wanted to... I wanted to know from you, sir, how we can uh, maintain a balance between doing decently well in exams and also, you know, being clinically sound uh, as a clinician apart from the entire examination system. See, one thing is you have to focus on, you know, getting your clinical examination marks, right? Okay, now this is not just for the exams. When you become yes. a practitioner, when you become a, you know, orthopedic, you know, you know, what to say, specialist, yes. you should be sound in a clinical examination. Otherwise, what happens? You will not be able to make a good diagnosis, and you become over relevant, over relevant on investigations. Like yes. MRI, uh, CT scans, and uh, X-rays, and yes. you will forget the the art of good diagnosis. And uh, you know, if you know the examination methods. Then it will be it will be a great boon to you in your life. So it is worth investing your time on. Now the, the greatest problem what our students have is they don't give any value to the clinical examination methods. They are very keen to learn surgical things. They want to operate. They want to be hip replacement, knee replacement, all these kind of things. But they don't want to focus on the clinical examination method. I emphasize that when you go to become a surgeon, you should become a good clinician. Okay, sir. Definitely. So, we we so keep that. Who are said you will not be Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for the. Thank I think. Good evening, good evening, sir. So thank you for the lecture, sir. I'm Avishek Dhawan. I'm a first year student Sanjay Shu. So I wanted to ask one question regarding the examination and everything. So like, like how to approach an examiner if he's from other institute? Like for certain tests, he has some different opinions. So how, how to tackle yes. that? Yes. See now, this is a very good question you have got about Abhishek, right? Yes, sir. Abhishek, this is a yes, very good question because uh, whenever I am attending all these teaching, the teaching, teaching programs, each examiner has got his own opinion, and each examiner has got his own technique of doing things, and the students always get confused. You know? yes, and uh, they go on and you know, so there is no way a student can think of what is in the mind of an examiner. Yes, sir. Okay. So. It becomes very difficult for you and they may take competence to also. So, according to me, and as an examiner also, and as uh, whenever I take the PG classes, what I do is I tell the students, please stick to the most standard method of examination, like thus or some yes. standard clinical examination. You please read that and please pick up the most or correct method of examination of your joint, spine, elbow, whatever it is. And I stick to that. There may be variants, there may be different different options, there are different different uh, ideologies, but the basic thing is the same. So if you are sound in your basic, you know how to examine the joint thoroughly, then even if the examiner from a different institute tries to you know feed you down with his whole version, you can always stick to the one which is standard. Yes. Then what happens? Then what happens? The examiner cannot go against what you are telling. 
And maybe there may be some ego issues here. Maybe expecting that he should he should don't follow his method. Yes, sir. Yeah, he has come as an exam as well. He has written a book or whatever it is. Or he might have given some presentation here to the student, and he expects that you have heard it and you have also tell it to him there. Yes, sir. If you talk to it, he will tell you. What I know is this. This is how it is. Please accept it. Don't argue and say no. That is wrong. That is not your legal posture. Don't say this. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for like that. So my idea is there are so many innumerable examiners, so there is no way you can learn each and individual examiner's technique. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for the Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, sir. My name is Dr. Nayan. I'm a first year resident. Uh, sir, I've been reading your books. Uh, my name is Nayan. Nayan Srivastava. Nayan. Okay, okay, Nayan. Nayan. So I've been reading your books from minus. So it's an uh, absolute honor to be finally talking to you like this. Um, so my question is that you emphasize. So, so my question is that in in your in in your lecture you emphasized about the importance of reading journals and uh, other articles. So, so according to you, what is the correct time to start reading journals and uh, articles apart from the standard books? What uh, I am reading? I'm a first year resident right now. Okay, right. See, actually, there is no strict time limit as such. You can start from day one also, but you can understand the recent advances only when you know the basics. Right? Suddenly, you cannot start from, you know, uh, trying to know about all the recent advances which are published in various journals. So, according to me, this is my personal opinion, the, the best time to start reading journals is at least a year after you are, you know, post graduation. There is no harm in reading journals right from the beginning. But, you in an aspect of the center, you start with some basic knowledge, and that you can get at least six months to one year after your training course starts. So, I, I always I know, I tell my students that the first course is clinical examination, and then go to the basic textbooks and learn the basics about it, basics about spine, basics about knee, and then learn about the diseases which affect the knee. What are the treatment methods available, investigation methods available? Then you look into the recent advances. Then probably you will not be confused. But if you start with the journals first, then there is every chance that you will not go in the basics, you may end up getting more confused. So I feel that the basic training should go first. And then, well, there are some very brilliant students. You know, they can understand everything, whatever they read. Whether they Google it or the journal it, whatever. So they are present people. I am talking about average students, and I feel that we are here for average students because the toppers they will they will pass on their own. What our our energy is focused on those. There's a possibility at least six months to a year. Familiarize yourself with your basics, then look into the journals. But when you come to the final year. You should be reading the journals and it should be members to train this over this. And still in the examination, last question, one or two, then I ask about recent advance. They will ask you oh, maybe about basics only. They will suddenly not ask to start or read the different technique, or they will not start asking the laser or, uh, or the road techniques and all. What they will ask you is still the basic questions only. Only when you have that well. Or when the examiner feels that this student goes well, he may now start asking you about the recent advances. So, the last year is one year which you should, I think, focus more on you know, the journals. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thanks a lot, sir. Okay, then. Okay. So, I think that is the last of them. And. Uh, I think we also uh, are here for more than an hour now. Yes, sir. It was very useful. And we'll continue this series of lecture in every two weeks. And uh, hopefully, hopefully a lot of 
lot of students had applied for the membership today itself and it was very difficult to ratify all of them but for next episode we'll have many more of them and much more interactions yeah, yeah, available on the website, right? yeah it will be available but the interaction okay, will yeah. not be there uh, not, but they can go through the lecture. Yes, they can always go through the lecture. So, okay, good, thank you. So, we have 15 minutes presentation uh, and 10 minutes of discussion. I think that was quite good. Yes, sir. So, so it was like a one hour class. It's like a theory class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very good much. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir.